He would steal every day in the store downstairs. The boss knew about it, but never said anything about it. Across the street from Mo's house was a group of call girls who sought work on the street day and night. There was a girl downstairs who used to exercise here. Mo's would always get a glass of water. He prepared dinner for his father every day. But no matter what, his father didn't like him. He bought a cake. The father asked him why he was spending money. But what he didn't know was that it was Mo's birthday. He pretended to wish him a happy 18th birthday. But it was Mo's 15th birthday. Not only did he not remember his son's birthday, he always said that his brother, who ran away from home, was 100 times better than him. His mother left home not long after giving birth to him. Mose had a depressing and an interesting childhood. On this day, the streets were blocked off. A film crew was shooting a movie. The shopkeeper looked very kind. Mose was also close to the girl for the first time. Abraham was impressed by a red roadster. He said he would have tried to act in the movie if he was still young. He imagined a good time with the lead actress. And that's when the actress came into the store and wanted to buy a bottle of water to pour. Abraham brought a bottle of water and asked for five francs. The actress taunted, Is water that rare here? He replied that water was not rare, but a star like you is rare. Mo's thinks he's very capable. He replied, I'll make back the money you stole. Mo's felt like he had been stripped naked. He said he'd give the money back, but Abraham didn't blame him. He comforted him. You don't owe me anything. If you want to steal something, come to my place. He took out a can of his best cat food. It tasted as good as regular canned food. He said you can use it if you want to save money. But don't eat it yourself. You don't have to buy bread every day. Don't throw away the tea when you're done. Dry it and use it again. Add some water to the wine bottle every day. In the evening Mose brought the canned cat food to his father. Father smelled it and didn't find anything strange. He cut off a piece and tasted it. He asked his son to have some too. Mose was always sullen. Because there was nothing in his life to make him happy. Abraham told him you were wrong. Well, smiling makes people happy. Although he didn't believe it, he took it to heart. In class, Mose had a problem that he couldn't do. The teacher was a bit angry. Mose looked at the teacher with a stiff smile. At night, he smiled at his father again. He hoped his father would like him, but his father said you don't have to do that. Hurt, Mose came to Abraham's store to talk. He said that if he was as good as his brother, he said that if he was as good as his brother, his father would have liked him. But Abraham told him, maybe your brother didn't like your father. Otherwise, he wouldn't have left. This gave Mose, who had a low self-esteem, some comfort. At the age of 15, Mose and Abraham, who was in his 70s, began an unrequited friendship. They arrived in downtown Paris. Everything looked so good. People were dancing in the streets. The bride rushed off with flowers to get married. A photographer took a souvenir photo of them. Mose thought it would be fun to live here, but Abraham said, If you have a heart for discovery, there's good food anywhere, on the bus after school. He met the girl. Mose went up to her and didn't say anything. He gave a stiff smile. The girl smiled back. From that day on, they became good friends. Although Mose always spilled water on her, but as the contact increased, they got to know each other better and better. But Mose always had low self-esteem. Even when he was with her, he also always felt, if his brother had been with him, she would have chosen him over Mose. Something sad happened to him. She had a change of heart. Mose became more and more self-conscious. The person he likes is in love with someone else. But Abraham says it's okay. Because the love you have for her is yours. And though she abandoned it, she couldn't destroy it. It's her loss. What you give is always yours. The one disaster after another. Mo's father lost his job. They had no financial resources. They were living on a shoestring. Mose went to the store. He asked Abraham how you stay happy. Because Abraham is a Muslim, his happiness comes from the Quran. He saw that Mo's shoes were worn out and asked him to buy a pair of shoes for him. You should be kind to your feet. If your shoes are hurting it, then replace them. Instead of changing your feet, Abraham bought him a brand new pair of leather shoes. Walking home, he had confidence and happiness. Back at home, he found a letter on the table. Inside was a few bills. His father had abandoned Mo's and run away from home. Now he was the owner of the house. It wasn't long before the police brought the sad news. Mo's father had committed suicide on the tracks. He painted the walls to start over. A woman walks in. His mother, who had abandoned him for years, but faced with a woman who had no part in his upbringing. Mo's didn't identify with her. She said his son had left the house. Mo's learned from her 
that the brother his father said was 100 times better than him didn't exist to keep her from disrupting his life. Mose wanted Abraham to adopt him. Abraham was more than happy to do so. He couldn't wait to go with him to the government hall. They were going to go through the adoption process. But Abraham was a foreigner. It was very difficult for him to go through the adoption process. The answer was no from all the people who dealt with him. Despite the lack of hope, but Abraham kept his smile on his face. Finally, a woman was willing to take on the case for them, to take most to meet his wife in Turkey. They went to the sales center. Abraham had his eye on the red convertible, but he needed a driver's license to buy the car. But he hadn't touched the car in decades. He took out a slip with Arabic writing all over it. The salesman couldn't read the words on it and sold him the car. The next day the car was delivered, but when they got in the car, Abraham realized he had forgotten how to drive. He had to start learning to drive at the age of 70. But just the simple road signs were a pain in the ass for him. With the help of Moe's, they had a special memory method. On the day of the test, the proctor asked him to stop. Moe's coughed in the back. Abraham immediately put the steering wheel on. After stopping the car, the proctor asked what the yellow dotted line was for. He forgot. With Moe's reminder, he said the correct answer, and that's how he got his driver's license. They were ready to go. Mo said goodbye to the women, who had played such an important role in his upbringing. They headed for Turkey. When they arrived in Switzerland, Abraham told him to see if a country is rich. You have to look at his garbage cans. If the garbage cans are nice, but there's not much garbage in them, it means it's rich. If there's trash everywhere, it means it's poor. They got on the ferry. Abraham, who was always talking, became silent because he was feeling the scent of his hometown. Although he left this place for decades, but the familiar smell and the familiar voice never changed. Abraham took him to see the local sects. After a short stay here, they set off again. They were getting closer to their destination. At night, they stopped at a small village. Most confidently approached him, but none of the girls would talk to him. The next day, he asked Abraham, Am I handsome? Abraham's answer was yes, but he also said that handsomeness is your strength. You can't use it as a tool. He said that men start out as rocks, then plants, then an animal, and finally it becomes a man. They finally reached their destination. But Abraham told him to get off first. After all this time, he wasn't sure what had become of his former home. Then he left the place. The children of the village swarmed around him. They were curious about this outsider. Mose took out his camera and took pictures of them. He then prepared to follow the main road to Abraham. A little boy followed him and kept him company. But halfway a motorcycle passed by. He called Mo's name anxiously. He couldn't understand what he was saying. He gave the boy his camera and got on the motorcycle and headed for the mountains. The car overturned on the side of the road. Mo's came to another village. He entered a room. Abraham was lying weakly on the ground. He told Mo's his story. Abraham's wife had died long ago. He left his home in grief and went to France. His only life was that little store. Now he has Mo's and he's back at home where he belongs. Mose didn't want Abraham to leave. He said we hadn't seen the sea yet, but Abraham told him that all the rivers would flow into the sea. Abraham left all his property to Mose. He still runs the store years later. A, like Abraham, never leaves the store. A little boy like Mose all those years ago, he stuffed the cans in his pocket, and like Abraham, he didn't reveal. J, Abraham always called him Wonwal. He passed that name on to others as well. He gave everything he had learned in his life to a boy without reservation. He also taught us in front of the screen. He accepted the ordinary. He believes that slow living is the key to happiness. He can face anything with a smile. We are all like Mose. We get impatient when things are difficult, but impatience doesn't speed things up. But a calm mind and a smile in the face of difficulties will have unexpected gains. In fact, we all know the truth. What we lack is the ability to execute. If we think and act at the same time, we can also be like Abraham, but will this also lose the passion for life? What do you think?